going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to the CHGO Bulls Podcast. Coming to you live from our studios here in the West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. Joined by Big Dave, back in studio. Bow, BWL Sports. Bow. Will the Goat Gottlieb. Will underscore Gottlieb. Wolf. And... Making his triumphant return to CHGO, the other Will Bulls fans know and love. <laughs> Four-time NBA champ, three of them with our very own beloved Chicago Bulls. Mm-hmm. Currently doing Bulls pre- and post-game analysis for NBC Sports Chicago. Our old colleague, our still dear friend. Your dad. Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> for the one and only Will Purdue. Yay! Yay! All right. Hey, Will. I'm oh. just glad Big Dave's here. Thank you, man. Me too. It's been two weeks without you here. Yeah, man. It's been a minute since I've been in here, and, and it's a great surprise to come back and see good old Will Purdue sitting up in here right now, who was in my Kia. You, I'm still impressed that you fit in my Kia very yes, well. the last sir. time I was here, you gave me a ride. I did. It's one of the highlights of my life was getting on the phone and saying, I can't talk to you right now. I'm taking Will Purdue somewhere. It's yeah. one of the highlights of my life. But when Matt reached out, I just said I wanted to make sure all three, yeah. not just two, but all three of you were you, here. You before. said that as if there were any chance you would agree to come here if Big Dave were not here. There's not a chance in hell. I did bring you something, Will. I brought you a gift. I'd oh. like to show you something. I saw is, is Matt, it the, Matt's seen this before. Is it, is it the gift that is keeps it, on giving? Is it something gift. that you want him to autograph and then you get to continue keeping? I didn't before, but now I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see it now. But, sir, this, oh. it's called Cooking Up a Championship <laughs> <laughs> from 1994 with the entire Bulls roster on the squad. Will, what can you tell us about this? Because you are front and center on this page, sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are Purdue recipes in there. there I are. flipped through it. There yes, are. There definitely. is. I was curious. Is it lasagna? I don't remember what's it was. We'll find I it. I thought though. it was I'll a casserole of some kind. I believe so. I believe so. Do you remember anything about this shoot right here? Absolutely not. Yes. <laughs> that is the right like answer. They just probably made you do a million of these things that <laughs> you just never. Look how young and sturdy about. and stout you are there, sir. Well, I'm, I'm trying to. Okay, so I'm. I've gone from my Converse contract to my Nike contract. Ooh, balling. And then, of course, you see Winnington's kind of cut off there. Mm-hmm. He's he probably on the back. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Steve Kerr. Yep. Mm-hmm. The whole gang's Cla- there. Clarence Gaines. Luke Longley. Mm-hmm. Who, who is, like, your closest friend on that team? Uh, BJ. BJ. BJ, okay. Yeah. He's good. BJ's gone soft, though. <laughs> what does that he mean? Find his recipe. He uh, lives in L.A. now. Oh, yeah. gross. BJ. Is that because he's, like, living the agent life? And if you're an agent, yes. you have to live in L.A.? Mm-hmm. BJ lives out there. Horace, Scotty. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll call BJ periodically. And uh, he'll be like, oh, I'm sitting out on my patio with the windows open having a late breakfast. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. Must be very nice. (laughs) Must be nice. And you will be joining him soon, won't you, Will? Don't you go out there once in a while? The G4 flying on out there? (laughs) PJ. Yeah. That's uh, (laughs) that Southwest has a G4. Is that what that is? (laughs) Dude, I can't sit in Southwest aisles, so I know you can't. Well, I sit in the exit row. Well, as do I. But I've now moved north, so I'm migrating most of my transportation dollars to O'Hare. Yeah, Ooh, but okay. Southwest still flies out of O'Hare. They Southwest, yeah, do. like a couple years ago, they finally added flights going uh, to and from O'Hare, but w- not nearly enough direct. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're doing Southwest and O'Hare, that is true. You're, you you got to make a stop somewhere. But then mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, why do you fly Southwest? And I'm like, well, it's A, it's economical. Yeah, it is. B, with a Southwest credit card, I can still get status where I can get on. They're slowly now converting um, their planes into the bigger... 800 series yeah. and have two rows of instead of just one of you know uh, yeah. exit row seats and it's 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 hard i mean i'm going to be very honest when you try to look at united american uh delta mm-hmm. you know that initial price yeah is is solid yeah but I don't fit in any of those seats that offer that initial price. Right, yeah. yeah. So the, the not all like of a sudden, premier economy, but just regular po people economy. Life. Yes. Yeah. When they talk about uh, the economy, which has limitations that says, A, you can buy your ticket now. B, you won't get your seat until you get to the gate. Right. The day of the flight. 
which means that you're the seat. And right if you're and bathroom. if you're Will Purdue's height, your legs go in the overhead bin, <laughs> and, and, and they don't they don't look at you and be like, "Hey, tough for you, right? Get on the damn plane, go sit down." <laughs> well, I found your recipe here. You had the special summer chicken salad. Ooh, is okay. what you oh, that here, is so. such a Will Purdue that thing is, to put man. in the Bulls team menu. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, it's, it's this man economical. Had a salad for money. dinner every night while that we is, were watching Bulls games at NBC. That is very true. Sir. Where'd I get it from? From Pot Bellies. Exactly. You got it from me from Pot Bellies. <laughs> he let you get something too, though, right? You did. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I, I would. I'd that listen, deal. I would make sure that if I asked somebody to get something for me, I would say, get whatever you want and I will pay for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is like, you know, that was before Uber. It yeah. was. You were, that was. You were the original Uber Eats. I mean, Matt Peck was the original <laughs> Uber Eats. <laughs> I delivered. He did it. And but he didn't get anything from rights. he didn't get anything from Potbelly because nothing came with Jardinier. <laughs> Although or bacon this jam. man admitted to bacon us jam. earlier today, hanging out in the office, that you have a jar of jard in your kitchen now because you have accepted and come to terms with the fact that lots of people love jard, and you are the one weirdo in Chicago who doesn't like Jardinier. <laughs> no, I come my I, my wife comes from a big family from Lagrange. Shout out and. Um, now that we've purchased a house, we have had the family over numerous times, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of members of the family like spice and they like Jardinier. Mm-hmm. So we had to go buy a bottle and keep it. Now it's in the refrigerator, actually. Oh, okay. So believe me, I've tried Graduate. to throw it out a couple times, and my <laughs> wife's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> but I will say there's just like certain things that like when you see something, something always comes to mind, right? Mm-hmm. And when I see Jardinier, I immediately think of Pat Beck. Mm. It's just, it, I can't. It's a great association mm. for you. Yeah, I am seriously. so proud of that. Yeah, for real. And it's because Will got pissed at me for sh- putting Jard as a pizza topping. <laughs> when he also started. I no, I didn't get pissed. I was just disappointed. <laughs> oh. That's okay. That's what that's that that hairs. You your dad, man. That's just a disappointment right there, man. Yeah. point is worse. But it like that publicly shames yes. me to the rest of our yes. colleagues for, <laughs> exactly. for daring to put Jardinier as a pizza topping. After scaring the shit out of me earlier that day. What happened? Text. You, you remember? Text from Will Purdue, mm-hmm. who had never texted me before. <laughs> Matt Parrott called me ASAP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I was getting fired. Wow. <laughs> and it was just about ordering pizza for everybody. Being publicly shamed in the office about something <laughs> regarding food? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't be you. <laughs> Couldn't be Couldn't you, be Pac. You, couldn't be you. Something regarding Jardinera? <laughs> yeah. Couldn't be you. I, I publicly shamed Joe one night when we were here doing pre and post he during did. the Bulls season. It was hilarious. And he secretly ordered Portillo's to be delivered to our There was office. no secrecy. <laughs> it was secret in the... You still, did it without telling an any of us you were doing clearly. it. It will sure. never be resolved. Sure. Joey will never let this go. This will okay, never so be hold resolved. on a second. He, I feel bad about he, it. He ordered his I feel dinner bad without about including it. anybody else. Correct. Correct. He ordered Portillo's for I wouldn't himself, say it was a secret. I just I took care of what was going on say, for me. Hey, which, and I clarified to him, so, if it's just like any old dinner order from wherever... That was where we expected. were. That's where we were not because I had ordered food plenty of times. You were never upset about it. Yeah. And then this one time you got very upset. So I was a little caught off so guard, but I understand now. <laughs> now I understand. So in other words, he's an SSOB. Uh, yeah. If you order Portillo's and do not what make that, that information known to Selfish. everyone you're, you're with. You? <laughs> but it, it's Portillo's, that's it. You always ask. Thank you. Mm. Now he got to get it from a four-time champion, too. Yeah. Damn. Even That's if fine. you don't want to get it, you frame it like, hey, Matt, you don't want anything, do you? Right. Mm. And you'd be you're like, well, that would be a lie. <laughs> I'll take it. He could have, he could have a meal around him. He's still like, beef now dipped for Tillos. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. One right? of these days, you're going to do that. We're going to be watching a game here. You're going to order yourself Portillo's. Mm. And Joey will not let you forget it. No, he's never. He's oh, actually, Joey's waiting. He's never going to do that. Though. I can't. Believe I know he's you never convinced them to be a sponsor. He's never going to do we're that. We're working on it. We're working on it. Oh, we're working on it hard, man. Because it's hey, also Portillo's. the end of that night. <laughs> hey, Portillo's story in the end of post game was uh, Jake, our GM, as a hero, getting Portillo's delivered for everybody. He did. And I sat here and just inhaled a beef sandwich. While we were doing a post game show, just it's like if you Kobe do Yashi. get that deal, make sure that you get a chocolate cake every show. Damn, a chocolate cake or a chocolate cake shake? Ooh. Have you had their cake Ooh, shake? Yeah, Will? Will. 
I haven't had the cake shit. Oh mm. my god, you're missing out. Mm. I've had the chocolate well, I settled cake. for a chocolate cake when you could put that chocolate cake <laughs> inside into of a shit. inside of chocolate <laughs> ice cream and drink it. <laughs> drink it. Oh, why not man. both? That is the ultimate. Why not both? <laughs> Can it be both? Can we have both? Well, so what? What you been doing this summer, Will? Enjoying enjoying some downtime. I know you said uh, you know your son's back at school. Are things yes. all all quiet at home? Yeah. So uh, my son was up here for. A, a while and uh i mean i knew he was not here to see me he was here for lala but at least he, <laughs> he went to for lala a while. he went all four days those crazy kids he went to all of them oh man well it was kind of he, he did yeah. he did an outstanding job okay he went all four days but he didn't go from open to close he he did his homework and knew exactly who he wanted to see mm -hmm. and uh the great thing was i always asked him the next morning how many steps did you take and they were in the, when they were there, they were in the twenty to 25,000 range Sounds every right. day. Because mm -hmm. he also, uh, I would take him to the train in uh, Edgebrook. Okay. They would take the train to Union Station. and Literally, it's, it was 1.1 miles over mm -hmm. to Lala. Spent all day there. Had to get back for the 1020 train, which they did. They missed it only once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then they were responsible, and they Ubered home, and then they were not happy with what it cost. I was like, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> and if yeah. I said, if you take we'll the train, I'll pick yeah. you up. We'll like Lala weekend, back. Ubering that far. Yeah. But it was Surprise. amazing. Very expensive. But it was just, it was awesome to see every night when I would pick them up, to see, A, how crowded the train was, uh. and to see just how many people could not walk a straight the line. tank. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was just kind of like a fishbowl when the train went by, and I'm like, the conductor's got to be loving this. <laughs> do you like any of your son's music? Um, yeah, actually, I do. A couple? Okay. I can't tell you the names of any right. of them, but, but I actually play. It's kind of interesting. The cool thing now is, is like, all the kids are going retro. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll call them and go, hey, Dad, you know, he's listening to some ACDC, some Van Halen, some... They're all kind of into the '80s stuff right now. Okay, and the tear comes good down for your him. Eye when you I was like, that. okay, yes, <laughs> yeah. So all of those are better options than the crap kids are listening <laughs> to these days. He's right there. Like, he's like, I got to do Joey this way. He's right I there. Feel, I, I'm going to give Joey the benefit of the doubt that all the music he listens to is not exclusively crap. Man, you don't like, but you don't like anything new. So I don't know. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> The point stands of what I said, sir. Well, I, I, mean, I heard the Stones are about to put out a new album for the first time in 20 years. <laughs> hey, kids. I'll check that out. Hey, fellow kids. <laughs> what is that brought to you by Geritol? What are yeah. you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> My knees started hurting. Metallica's going to be at Soldier next summer. You know I'm going to that. Oh, yeah. You're definitely going to Speaking that. Speaking of geriatric rock bands <laughs> that still rock my face off. He's going to that, for sure. Do you go Do you go to concerts, Will? Do you hang out those? Uh, Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, who is Will Purdue going to see? Who are you spending money on to actually go sit down a good seat? Not like a, you know, cheap seat. I'm talking about you actually spend some money well, on I don't, the seat. See, that's the whole thing. I don't go to see the band. Mm. I go to listen. Okay. Everybody's like, oh, man, I'm buying seats in the second row. Good for you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you get seats in the second row, everyone behind you is going to be pissed. <laughs> Well, that's a fair point. Because they're not seeing anything, anything going on, on on stage. I don't care about that. I just want to be in the building so I can hear. Mm. Yeah. I'm there for the music. I'm not, I mean, so, you know, the Eagles, I'll probably go see yes. them because they're not on their, they're on their last tour. That's, they're definitely on my list. Um, I, I regret not going to see Elton John when he was here. Mm. You know, it's, it's a lot of older artists. Um, Darius Rucker. Mm-hmm. You know, but now that also that all starts in the heyday of you know Hootie and the Blowfish. Right. Yeah. So I, I just, saw him this summer. He was at part of some country fest that was like in the oh, United Center parking lot. No, he was in uh, smoke smoke fest. Smoke, some, whatever they call that thing. Yeah. We were out of town though. When he smoke, smoke out. out. Thank yeah, you. He he comes every year for that. Yeah. Oh wow. So, My first time going there. I did not know until that day that there were that many country fans in the city of Chicago. Oh yeah. I was terrified. <laughs> so I just recently uh, went to Atlanta. Okay. And they have an outdoor uh, amphitheater called Chastain. And so a uh, buddy I played with at Vanderbilt, Barry Goheen's a huge, huge music guy. Mm. And um, we went on Friday night while we were there, we went to see Sting. And then on Saturday night, we went to uh, see the Psychedelic Furs and Squeeze. Oh, Had a great time. 
I like this, man. I like this side of Will Perdue right here. That's what I want to hang out As with. Dave is still casually just flipping through the old midnight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pulling out some. Oh, yeah, I got book. another one. I definitely found another one. Found found uh, your grandmother's corn pudding. Oh, yeah, that's it's outstanding. Outstanding stuff. Okay. okay. Can we get some of that? <laughs> uh, what's my wife makes Also, it? can you explain to me what corn pudding is? It's Is it like a cross between cornbread and pudding? Oh, it's more of like cream corn. Like, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Like cream corn I got you. Enjoy. It's and it's also the Will Purdue Hush Puppies up in here. That's when I was a young kid. We used to go to the, eat fish all the time, and I wouldn't eat fish. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like the texture, so I would eat like a thousand Hush Puppies while my parents were eating <laughs> fish. <laughs> and then as you get older, you realize it has, you know, it, it's just basically starch. And yeah, right, right. And it's just fried. What's wrong with Deep my fried chest? Starch. It has no <laughs> nutritional value whatsoever. Right. <laughs> And as an older man, you're like, man, I can't be eating this crap. <laughs> Hence the salads. Because it only goes one place. That's yeah. A, mm, this is fair. Uh, before we take our first ad break, I did want to point out uh, our friend Jimmy from UK Chicago Bulls, I see hanging out in the comments, pointing out that you have no problem letting your son get an expensive Uber around the city of Chicago, but you insisted on giving Jimmy a ride back to his hotel mm. for that Windy City Bulls game, which by and large, just one of the many examples of Will Purdue being one of the nicest people yeah, there, Jimmy, are, there is. Jimmy took the time to go all the way out to Now Arena to see the Windy City Bulls. Yeah. And then when he told the story about how he got in, and he, I think he mis, misunderstood how far out Now Arena was. Oh, for <laughs> sure he misunderstood. Yeah, and then when sure. he realized that the blue line doesn't go all the way there, <laughs> he was already too far in to turn around. Mm, yeah. Mm. It's kind of like Gilligan's Island, right? <laughs> It reminds me of so when he, we went to that gym in Paris that was like an hour and a half away. Oh, to do God, show. yeah. Mm, this is true. Very this fun, true. but long drive. So when Jimmy mentioned that uh, he just happened to be talking to Mark Shanowski and I, that he was headed back and he was getting ready to take an Uber all the way, and I was like, hey, I know this guy's on a budget. So I live in, lived in the city at the, at the time in the West Loop, and I was like, I'll give you a ride. Mm. Now, when we got close to the hotel, I slowed down, and he tuck and rolled. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> Uh, there's a price to pay, right? Got to save some money somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go idle now. Can't go idle. Got to save that gas money, baby. Love it. Shout out, Jimmy. <laughs> Hope you're doing well over there in the UK. Absolutely. Um, all right. While we share these words from our friends and sponsors, hit that thumbs up. Show our guy will produce some love in the form of thumbs ups. Make sure you're also subscribed. When we get back from this break, obviously, we'll dive into Will's thoughts on the Bulls off season. That's why we're here, y'all. Uh, today's show brought to you in part by our friend, Charlie the Bacon Guy. Your boy. Bacon Jam. Boom. He's based out of Woodbridge, Illinois, and makes craft bacon and, as the goat said, bacon jams jam. in over 30 different flavors. Ooh, Purdue will jam. probably only like two of them, but that's okay. The rest of you, try all 30 flavors. The can product you, is you always all natural. Out there? <laughs> what? Well, if you're going to make that statement, you got to give me a couple of the flavors. I do. I'll you know how real work rolls, man. The next time I see you, I will bring you some Charlie bacon jam. How about that? In a variety of flavors. So you can try them for yourself. Mm. The bacon what, lasts I'd rather in have the, bacon. the <laughs> vacuum seal packages up to 45 days in your fridge and up to six months in your freezer. Bacon jam lasts even longer. But you don't need to worry about that because as soon as it gets to you, you're going to eat all of it because it's that delicious. Mm-hmm. Some of the flavors that you can get from Charlie the Bacon Guy, maple pepper, French toast. I tried that one when he brought some to the studio. Incredible. Chorizo. Mm. You ready for this one, Will? Chardonnay. Chardonnay flavored bacon, baby! <laughs> oh my goodness! What more could Chicagoans want? The bacon jam goes perfectly on anything, with anything, stirred up into anything, or just eat it right out of the jar with a spoon. That's my, that's that's my move. Thing? Okay. You can find Charlie the Bacon Guy on social. Instagram at Charlie the Bacon Guy. Twitter at CZ the Bacon Guy. Website is in the works and on the way soon. In the meantime, if you want to place an order for yourself, you can just email him. And his email address is charliethebaconguy mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Impossible to, to forget that. Mm-hmm. He's got on lock. Charliethebaconguy at gmail.com. Get some bacon in your life, y'all. Mm-hmm. Now, while you're enjoying that bacon, the only thing you need to be doing is watching TV. <sighs> Sitting on down and enjoying it. Sounds and the way like, you do that. Sounds like paradise. Yes, it does, Matthew Peck. <laughs> then let me tell you how to get in. You go Fubo TV is what you do. 140 plus live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. You can stream live TV from any device that you got. You can watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price out there. Start watching immediately immediately with a Will Produce favorite word, free, free trial. 
No contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up, sit down, and start watching. A thousand hours of the cloud DVR is included also for no extra charge. More free stuff for you. You can watch those local teams while you're traveling, y'all. College football, Big Ten, NFL, Bears, NFL Network, Red Zone. Oh, man, the Ryder Cup. Everything you can tune in to Fubo TV. So watch all your favorite college football. Shout out Texas. Shout out Joey and NFL with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com slash C-H-G-O to sign up for 15% off of your first month of Fubo Pro. Fubo TV. Turn it on. Sit it down. Enjoy. Mm. Did uh, don't, don't. Horns get another uh, dub this past weekend, Joe? 4-0. 4-0? Good what do they them. rank? What do they rank now? Uh, four. Fourth? Nice. All oh, right. Horns. All right. What's what's your favorite sport to watch when basketball is is, you know, Excuse me, three. Season, Excuse me, three. Like it, do right. you like baseball, tennis, golf? Like what what's your off-season sport to watch? Take tennis, please. <laughs> well, um the US Open's one of the great, greatest in-person Sporting events known to man. Yeah. Mm. You don't know that unless you go. Or have, And I've been very fortunate to go. It's just the atmosphere is outstanding. The location. Because it's just, just everything you can do while you're there. You can go to a show one night. Go to the late night matches. Go during the day. Everything. That's, it's just. I do watch tennis. Probably watch golf the most. Um, I've watched. I was watching F1. But it's gotten boring now. If you watch F1 right now, you're watching to see who comes in second. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know who's going to win. Um, what about the uh, NASCAR one that happened in Chicago? Did you watch that? Uh, you know, yeah. where they made a course, like, through the city and on Lake Shore I and all that. that. Yeah, I actually yeah. went down one day. I know a lot of uh, guys that are in, within Flex. the teams. So I went down to watch practice and, and uh, you know, enjoyed it. Yeah. Took my brother-in-law for the first time. He, he really enjoyed it, so mm. we uh, watched the race. We would have gone to the race on Sunday, but because of the weather, we probably thought it would be better just to watch on TV. Because mm-hmm. the only drawback from – now, it, it, it was a great atmosphere. The only drawback of street races is is it's hard to see. You know, you only get to see a certain location. Right. But it is hard to replicate the atmosphere on television. Mm. So if you can get a hot pass and get in the pits, I would highly recommend it. Mm. That's where all the action is. Recommendations from four-time champion right there, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, if you know anybody, who can hook it up with that. <laughs> <laughs> do that. You go. <laughs> go um, all all right. you guys got to do is cover it. You guys get yourself a nice suite in one of those hotels that, where you can see the whole course. I don't think people Let's would be right interested in my coverage of NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's true. I wouldn't know. What Hi, the hell I'm I hate about. it. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that chance the rapper SNL sketch where he's there ringside hockey. covering hockey, and he Let's has no hockey. idea what he's talking Let's about. Do that hockey. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> we are almost done with the "What do you watch while basketball is not on?" part of our calendars. Yes, Bulls media day this coming Monday. We are less than a week away from media oh, day yes. and the start of training camp. Will after the Bulls, um, somewhat. Uh, gracefully bowed out of the play-in tournament last season, finished 40-42 and regular season. What do you make of the hashtag continuity plan they seem to be running with here, bringing back not only Vooch on a new three-year deal, but bringing back Kobe, who had a pretty promising uh, final year of his rookie contract last year, also bringing back Io. What do you think about that? Take out the notepad here. That's right. Get comfortable <laughs> on the wheel. Get comfortable, baby. I love this. I love this part of the show. No holds barred, by Get the way. Get into it. You, you know this already, but you can say whatever you want on our here platform. Yeah. Well, I think they had no choice but to go this route. Mm. This was, you know, I, I understand selling the continuity aspect of what we're doing. But unless they planned on making some significant changes, this was the route they had to go. Um, Meaning... If they weren't trading Zach Levine, this is what they had to do. Zach or Demar, yeah. Um, so you know, it's hey, you had already gone all in. Now you're, I guess you could say you've tripled down on this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're going to basically talk about their fourteen and nine record since uh, the All Star game. But you know, I just, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I actually like the Vooch signing. Mm-hmm. 
Because the question is, you tell me a post player that was available that could put up better numbers than he can. But the question is, if you're going to sign him, please use him properly. Mm. And that means, I don't mean he's got to just, you know, throw an anchor down in the paint and put him down on the block. But he's got to get more touches down there. And that's the, that's the delicate part. I don't want to say difficult, but delicate part of trying to keep him on the floor at the same time as Zach and DeMar, who are mid-range players. Because mm-hmm. if you do put, put him down in the post, that means there's another defender in the paint. So that, doesn't, that means that more times than not, DeMar and Zach aren't getting all the way to the rim. Right. So that's why you see him out on the perimeter so often. But you got to find a way to get him more touches in there. I mean, you could still use him as a facilitator. Mm-hmm. What was uh, I always talk about this, and when people ask me this about the Bulls, I said, out of curiosity, what was uh, Vooch's best game last year mm-hmm. against who? Warriors, I believe, 40-something points. Denver. Denver? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, yeah, that game should, I remember that game on the road. Best Nicola great, on the floor. He did a great job against Joker. That was a great man. game. But why? He basically was replicating what Joker was doing. Mm. I don't, I'm not sitting here saying he's an MVP caliber player, but I'm saying that he has the skill sets in order to replicate what the Joker does. You can run the offense out of the high post, yeah. and now the paint's open, right? Mm-hmm. And you can do a lot of, you know, and that's one of the things that people don't understand was so successful about the triangle. I'm not saying this team needs to run the triangle, but if you put it, put it down in the post, you just don't stand. You've got to run a lot of action off the ball mm-hmm. to occupy the defense. And then that allows him more space to operate. But at the same time, you put your shooters on the opposite end, opposite side of the floor. After a couple dribbles, he gets a couple points in the paint, the first two or three possessions. Then they change their defense, and now guys are open on the perimeter. And then you can increase your league worst, you know, number of, free, of threes attempted per game. Mm. Working in, you know, old school inside out. You don't have to come down off the break and shoot a three. Mm. So I just think that there's – you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the season. I know it's continuity, so we don't think we're going to see a lot of changes. But if this team is going to do better than their 40 and 42 record, mm-hmm. they have to make changes, yeah. even though the personnel is pretty much the same. So I think that's a really good point. It's something we've talked a lot about is not being necessarily frustrated with the roster stuff, because I agree. It's like you're down this path. The only way to make any changes was to like make a huge move, which they just weren't going to do. Um, but I think the bigger question is, okay, how can you adjust the offense with bringing in Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, maybe playing a little bit more through Vooch, whether it's high post or low post, but with the majority of the roster staying the same, can a team like that, that's been together for a couple of years now that has guys that play a certain way that enjoy playing a certain way. Can you make those kind of big changes heading into just one off season now where it does seem like they kind of have to make some adjustments to get out of the 25th range in offense? Mm -hmm. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I'm not comparing this anybody to this guy, but did Michael Jordan make significant changes? Absolutely. I mean, if he can make changes, anybody can. Okay. And I, I truly believe that Zach and DeMar are good enough to make the changes. The question is, are they willing to make the changes? Mm -hmm. Okay, And I think there's two simple things, in my opinion, that will really help this team that don't really require a a huge sacrifice from anybody, but it's more of an instructional thing. And I've talked about this on NBC Sports Chicago quite a bit. One of the things that we had to help increase the pace – now think of this. We're talking about increasing the pace back in the 90s was – you have to designate one of the two bigs to take the ball out of the mm-hmm. after maids. So there's no – how many times did we see the ball go through the net and then bounce 15 times before somebody picked it up right. and took it out of bounds? You taking it out? I'm taking – who's who's taking it out? You know, guys sprint the other direction to go, you can run all you want, but if you don't have the basketball, defense is already set. But if you have a designated guy taking the ball out of the basket, most notably in this case, it a lot of it depends on the defense. Right, because like when we would play um, the Magic back in the day, it was always the four man. Horace would take it out. Cartwright didn't run a lot, but I would run. Mm-hmm. Stacy would run because mm-hmm. we wanted to we wanted to force Shaq to run the floor, mm-hmm. right? So then, you know, with the hopes that you can fatigue him just enough, 
that maybe he, late in the fourth he doesn't feel like battling through double teams. Mm. So now you go fast forward. Why can't we do that now? Why can't you say, you know, when we're playing somebody where Vooch has a distinct advantage, P. Will, you take it out. After Mage, you take it out. you got to take it out. Vooch, you run down the floor, take your man with him, pin his ass underneath the basket, and then we look to push. Okay? If you can get it out quick and you have a designated man, the ball's maybe not going to Vooch, mm. but if Vooch runs, what does that do? That collapses the whole defense. Mm. So then when Zach and DeMar run on the wings – the defenses collapse because everybody's job when they play their defense the right way is to make sure the, the basket's protected first. And if Vooch is running, his man may not get back. So then that creates mismatches. And all of a sudden, Zach gets the ball on the wing and he's got a big on him because one of the guards had to run and get down and try to, you know, slow Vooch up until the big can get down. And then now Zach's got a huge advantage. Vooch is smart enough. He'll flare out sure. and then open up the paint. Mm -hmm. And then when those guys are trying to switch, Zach takes it to the rim and can finish with authority. Or in that case, DeMar can get. Because we need to play faster. We need more possessions. And if we get more possessions, then we can increase the amount of threes that we take. Mm. All right? And that's the other thing. People are like, all right, Javon Carter shoots 40%. But he averages 3.2 threes a game. It's not like he's, he's a volume shooter. Mm. And more guys than not, when they start becoming – volume shooters their shooting percentage goes way down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you can't just expect that he's going to change everything i think it's just, it's just they got to play faster mm -hmm. but then that's when that word discipline comes in just because you mm -hmm. play faster doesn't mean you gotta we're the phoenix suns and we got to jack a shot up in seven seconds or less mm -hmm. yeah. you know that's yeah. they're just an anomaly mm -hmm. back in the day so it's just and i think those are little changes and still run the same type of offense, but if you look to push and compress the defense, it'll make things so much easier, and that starts with having a designated man taking the ball out of bounds. Well, the stuff you're saying, <clears throat> excuse me, to me sounds a lot like basketball IQ stuff. Exactly. And do you think that with the continuity, because I'm assuming having that kind of continuity and being in this Billy Donovan offense would help certain guys, you know, increase their basketball IQ and know these kind of things. Do, do you expect to see those things like that this season? I certainly hope so. You know, what you're hoping is, is that in that off season, because of technology now, that the coaching staff has been sending videos and breaking things down and sending stuff to these guys about this is how we want to do it. This is what we want to do. Fast forwarding training camp. Here's the other thing now. This the beginning of the year, you take the first 20 games, I mean, that's murderer's row. Yeah. And so continuity, I mean, you basically set this team up for failure in the sense that expectations are not necessarily high. But, you know, when you look at this and you talk about OKC, 0-2 last season. Mm -hmm. A young team with link yeah. that this is what the Bulls struggle with, youth and length. They right? got better. And SGA, an all-NBA caliber talent. Mm -hmm. And then you got and Chet, Chet Holmgren. Yeah. I mean, Chet Holmgren, Holmgren, not, you know, we don't know what this guy is, but this, right. this team is going to take a significant leap this sure. year. Sure, absolutely. All right? So right out of the shoot. And then the second game is Toronto. Team has got a chip on their shoulder because you knocked them out in the play-in game. The team that might have Damian Lillard on it? <laughs> it might. You never yeah. know. <laughs> and then what do you got again? A young Pist uh, Pistons team. Yeah. Right? With a new coach. Nick Thompson. And if they're healthy, with Monty Williams, I think they could make a significant improvement. I agree. Another, again, youth, size, mm -hmm. something that the Bulls struggle with. And then a Pacers team that has something to prove. Right? Beat again, as well. another guard. Mm-hmm. Right? Halliburton, yeah. And then Dallas. That's your first five right there. But then you start going down the list. Brooklyn, Denver, Utah, the Phoenix Suns, the Pistons again, Milwaukee. Then they got that interesting uh, exchange where they have two home games against Miami and two against Orlando. Right. Yeah, right. And mentioning Orlando, you know who I think the new Orlando is? I think the Pistons step in where Orlando stepped off. Mm -hmm. and you expect Orlando to get a little better. Sure. But, again, teams that the Bulls have trouble with. So, Zach's not hurt. There should be no uh, minutes limitations. 
this team should hit the ground running because of continuity, mm -hmm. because of chemistry. Right. They have to get off to a good start. I understand if you go back and you look, uh, I think this was on Bleacher Nation, um, up until December 16th, they have the ninth hardest schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From December 17th on, it's the fifth easiest. But you can't wait till then to finally start winning some games. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because it's if you go with continuity, and I think Arturis basically said they were disappointed on how the last season ended, right? 40 and 42, sure. play-in game. Sure. And, and they barely dug themselves out of the hole they had with their, whatever it was, 14-9 and nine record after the All-Star break they were so proud of that barely got you the 10th seed in the play-in. You know, a lot of people are like, well, why are you saying they're setting it up for failure? Why not setting themselves up for success? Because at some point you have to say history, there's a reason why it's called history. Mm -hmm. Okay? They have the potential. You know, they have promise. They have the possibility. They have potential, the three Ps, right? But then you start thinking about, you know, okay, what have we seen? Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. This team looks good on paper, but this is the year we hope and pray that they really take that step forward. Yeah, they have to. Because I, the one thing we do know for a fact, it's been stated, no Lonzo Ball. So we can't occasionally when things aren't going well, let's divert and talk about Lonzo. Mm -hmm. Not coming back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's just focus on the group we have now. What can this team do? I had somebody ask me the other day, to you, who's the most important player? To me, it's not a player. It's Billy Donovan. Mm. I love that. Uh, expand. Like, why, why do you feel it's Billy? Because he's got to convince these guys to play <clears throat> a certain way. I think, you know, if you go back and you – and that's, that's the other thing I do. I'll have to look into that FUBU thing. FUBO TV. FUBO yeah. TV. Yep. FUBO about – because I like to go back and well, – that's a Johnny Box thing, but I'll, we'll keep it at that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Because I like to go back and watch post-game press conferences. Mm. I like to watch certain games. Yeah. You know, um, if I remember correctly, Billy talked a lot about how they needed to play a certain way, how they needed to do this, they needed to do that. But it, we heard that a lot. Sure. So I kind of get the feeling that Billy felt like they never really got to where he wanted them to play or how they wanted them to play. Mm. So he's got to find a creative way to get them to do that. Because I think he understands the best way for this team to play. All right? Um, that, and, no, like, that's a very interesting sticking point because I think a lot of Bulls fans, many of whom hang out with us in the comments on a daily basis, mm -hmm. don't have faith that Billy knows the best ways that this team should play to sure. maximize the pieces that he has and get them to play together in a way. Whereas it's not, as you're suggesting, maybe Billy – having the wherewithal to convince his players to play that way rather than does Billy know the way that they should be playing? What do you no, think I think about he it? knows. He's, the players have to buy in. Mm -hmm. So what, what goes into that? Because I think at a certain point it's like if as a coach, and for the record, like I am very much on the side of like when you have players that are limited, not bad, but limited in the way that they can play, right? DeMar – kind of needs to have the ball in isolation at the elbows. So when you have guys like that and not a lot of shooting around them, it's difficult mm -hmm. to play any style that you want, right? You don't have the flexibility to play a triangle or a, a warrior style offense or a seven seconds or less style offense. You, you kind of are limited. So when there's not as much like groundwork or proof of concept that playing a certain style works as a player, how hard is it to like trust that what your coach is trying to tell you will work? Like, I mean, well, that's an I interesting that's thing. The, I also read an article in Bleacher Nation uh, where they talked to Adam Amin talking about this is the year that they really have to really trust one another. They got to trust the younger players. They got to trust the new players mm -hmm. that are coming in this year as free agents. And you got to trust the fact that if I give up the ball, I may not get it back, but the guy I give it to will do the right thing with right, it. Right. Okay. Unless that guy is Bill Cartwright, and we're talking about, <laughs> and we're talking about MJ. <laughs> but I, and let me make this statement. I know that, un, that Vooch, unfortunately, takes a lot of uh, criticism. Yeah. But I can promise you it's not. He's not the problem. I agree. Okay. 
I can sit here and I can get you, and th this is the other thing that we always talk about. The film is the truth seeker. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how you can get Vooch plenty of touches in the first half. He has 17 points and you're up by 12 when you go into the locker room. Mm -hmm. but then in the second half, he hardly gets any touches. He only has four points and you lose by eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is, is, are you telling me the opponent has made that much of a change on defense that they now totally dictate how you're playing? Mm. Or do you fall into that trap of allowing the defense to dictate how you play and then you change how you play because, hey, that guy's already got his. Mm. It's now time for me to get mine. Mm. Yeah. I think one of the things that this team has to realize, and this is more, to me, this is more on the players and the coaching staff, and I know that Billy and Maury's Cheeks is a huge prime example. They've preached this. But the guys have to buy in that if you make the proper sacrifices, you will get the necessary credit you deserve and you want. Credit, praise, whatever you want to call it. It's the reason why we only had one guy on the All-Star team when we had two other guys that probably deserved to be on the All-Star team. Mm -hmm. Got to win games. Got to win. Uh, we got to take another break here. We come back. We'll get more of Will's thoughts. Um, speaking of getting out to a good start with that uh, murderous row of an opening schedule, let's talk starting lineup because I'm curious who you think should be in there. Uh, while we're doing that, hit that thumbs up if you didn't do it the first time around. And make sure you're subscribed to the CHO Sports YouTube channel. Today's show brought to you by Splash Sports. Two of my favorite words. CHO has a weekly pickaxe and NFL Survivor contest for everyone to participate for real money. It's my favorite kind of money. Cash. Not Monopoly money. I'm talking real dollars. Not crypto. It's easy to enter. <laughs> Definitely not crypto. <laughs> Head to SplashSports.com slash CHGO. You can find the link in our description here on YouTube and sign up. Deposit cash to get started. All you need to get started is $10 to enter either of these contests. CHGO has our weekly NFL Pick X contest and our CHGO Survivor contest. The more who enter, the larger that prize gets. And we'll be running contests regularly throughout this NFL season, so be sure to keep that link handy. You can also run your own contest. Maybe you're sick of being the commissioner of your season-long fantasy leagues. Hello. <laughs> well, you can get all of the benefits and fun without all of the chasing around people in your fantasy league, if you do it at Splash Sports. Instead, you can sign up to be a commissioner at Splash Sports right through this link and earn money for the contest that you're already running with your friends. Head to SplashSports.com slash CHGO to join in. Different contests coming throughout the season. We are stoked to compete with and against you. Be sure to click that link in the description. SplashSports.com slash CHGO. Mm. Uh, baby Joey, hit me up. As he always does. <coughs> As he likes to do. Uh, mm -hmm. He said he's going to try to make some hush puppies. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to try that out. He's going to try he's that uh, out. Great Uncle Will. Great yeah, Uncle Will's great recipe. Great Uncle Will's recipe. You know what I mean? <laughs> even it's, though he's it's a, really easy. I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> even though he's an infant, he can read. And, yeah. You know what I mean? But he's very smart. I don't know if you want to let him around the stove. I don't, I don't know if that's right or if that's good or anything. But, you know, just more things that I don't understand. Never. Because they never understood. Never understood. They don't get it. Why? Why do these glasses cost so much money? We don't want to pay all that money to look so damn cool. None of us do. We just want to look cool and do it. Shady Ray said, we're going to do something about that. The Independent Sunglasses Company offering that world-class product just as good as any expensive pair you have put on your sexy face. The durable frames, the extremely clear optics for your outdoor, and as this gentleman is over here proving, your indoor adventiones. Go told me it's a word. Yes. And that's not all. Shady Ray's has that insane protection program that we like to call the Matt Peck Lost and Broken Replaces Plan. There it is. Oh, Ooh. right in there. Off the backboard. Boom. And in, ladies and gentlemen. Big shot into Kevin better at that. He is, man. I don't know if that's a good thing, <laughs> but he is definitely getting better at that. It's season for him. <laughs> years of practice. Yeah, years and years of anger have gotten that too, of ladies and gentlemen. But let's just say it was glasses on that hat. They would have broken apart, gone splat, that rhymed, and he would have been upset at that. More rhymes. But he will remember. He could take those glasses, put them in an the envelope, send them right on back to Shady Rays. They will send him a brand new pair for free, no questions asked. Or let's say you're out and about and you see Will, the Quaff God, got leave out there walking around with the brand new haircut mm. and the five o'clock shadow looking like Superman beard. Yeah, he got happening right now. 
And you're like, damn, he look cool with them glasses on. I could look that cool. Well, then you realize, no, you cannot look that cool. Only one person can do that, and that is Will Gottlieb. But you can get the glasses changed. Let's say you, uh uh-uh, not feeling these. Go to his website, get you some new glasses right there. Send the ones you got on back to Shady Rays. And as long as you do it within 30 days, it is for free, ladies and gentlemen. They will send it to you. They have got your back when you shop. So, exclusively for the listeners out there, Shady Rays giving away their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO for 50% off of two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. Try for yourself! Mm, the shades that are rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Because the Shady Rays, y'all, with the Rays are just oh so shady. Mm. You got any pairs of Shady Rays, Will? No? No, but I could use some. <laughs> maybe, maybe we, we got to hook Will up with some shades, We got to hook man. Will up with some shades. Maybe we still got some leftover pairs in Jake's yeah, office. Yeah, we'll check that out. We'll check that out. Get this man some shades. Hey, Jake. You got a big selection. You got some Shady Rays in there? <laughs> Purdue wants some Rays. He's looking. He's All right, look. so mm-hmm. are we ready to go back? Yeah, let's yeah, do it. On, okay, it so let me ask you this question. Uh-oh. <laughs> so what do we say? As I started preparing for the upcoming season, Mm -hmm. there's a stat that jumped out at me, okay? And it's not, you know, last than three-point attempts per game. But do you know that Vooch, Zach, and DeMar combined only missed 13 games? Mm. Well, because Vooch had all 82. Right. After... Zach's injury management, he ended up playing, what, 77? 77. Which 77. is the most he's played, played in his Bulls career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And DeMar, 74. Yeah. yeah. Not the most Zach has played in his career. He corrected, he corrected me. Because he had a. He <laughs> had most a, he's played with the Bulls. Correct. Minnesota right. year. He played, he played all 82. But even with that, their offense was only ranked 24th best. Mm. And those That's three players problem. specifically didn't have a positive net rating together. Yeah, or like it was like .0. Oh, oh. look at this. Oh. Look at this year, ladies James. and gents. The question is, yeah, I'll, will I'll a, they, I don't do you need to get custom sunglasses made just because of your large size as you know? Oh, oh, he's feeling look at those. Oh, he's liking that. These are kind of like the Deion Sanders look. Hey, a little primetime shades. He's rocking that to the Eagles concert, baby. <laughs> look at him. Right I'm just there. looking to win. I'm not trying to get clicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, sir. ladies that and is, gents. Look at that. that is correct. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Shady, I, just, Ray I, don't Purdue. As, I don't look as cool as Matt. Well, well, I mean, I, yeah, I, you're his dad, so it's okay. I mean, it's all right. You're looking cool. Maybe man. if I uh, eat a little Jardinier, I'll look cool. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Jam. But <laughs> maybe you just, you know, bring all four of your NBA championship rings to the studio with you next time. <laughs> Automatic win. Good all facts. you got to do is tell me. I'll take care of it. Nope. <laughs> what are you going to bring? Pat Riley style. What if I put him on the table? <laughs> I don't know. I think I got a trophy from, I don't know. I brought the trophy. <laughs> well, I sat it there. I'll say that. <laughs> I've got some autographed Will Purdue cards in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But think about that. So these, <laughs> let's just say these guys stay healthy again. Mm-hmm. In between, basically those three combined are going to play 100 minutes a game, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is why I keep talking about I think Billy's the most important. He's got to figure out how does he, how does he divide up the, the, the rest, the, 100, the other 140. Right. And that's going to be difficult to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it will be. I, th- I think it's very interesting to think about how he's going to work his rotation this year. Um, is he going to go with a 10-man right out of the gate? Um, I think he will early on. Early on, okay. including, you know, Drummond getting minutes, Io getting some spot minutes. Um, but, but you've told us before. Now, hold on a second now. You brought that up. Yeah. Since you brought that up, let's, yeah. uh, let's talk about the rotation. Yeah. Okay. Starting with starters, are you thinking it's Javon or are you thinking it's Kobe? Playing in the backcourt with Zach. Or Io. Or, or, Io. or Io. I think it's Javon. You think it's Javon? Now, and my reason being is when you talk about that lineup, so think about what's more explosive offensively, Kobe, Zach, and DeMar, or Javon, Zach, and DeMar? Obviously Kobe. I think it might be a little unrealistic to expect Kobe to take as big a leap this year as he did last year. I think he's going to get better, but – Let's, let's not put the cart before the horse. Mm. Okay. Okay, because, I mean, he made a significant improvement last year, in my Definitely. opinion. Yeah. On Definitely. both ends of the floor. Agreed. So when you talk about putting him in the starting lineup, I still think when 
between him, Zach, and DeMar, he's probably the best defender of those three. But yet, not as good as if you put Javon in the starting lineup. Now, if you go back and look at Javon's numbers, he doesn't necessarily put up huge numbers as right. a starter. He's, right. he's better off, at least history says, he's better off he's, coming off the he's bench. He's a role guy. Yeah. And yeah, oftentimes just because a he starts guy. doesn't mean he's going to play a lot of minutes. But I think he's just better off on that lineup because of, as we just talked about, I, I would prefer to have him on Shea, on Shea in game one yeah. than Zach or DeMar. Hmm. Okay? Um, and then you talk about the Pacers. I would prefer to have him on Halliburton, Halliburton than Zach or DeMar. I would prefer to have him on um, John's favorite player. Luca. Luca with Dallas. Mm-hmm. You want me to just keep going? <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer to have him when they play Denver. Right. I would prefer to have him when they play Phoenix. Right. I, I mean, I, that's just why I'm looking at it that way. Well, and if you're talking about prioritizing or at least putting a solid emphasis on defensive matchups as Billy's choosing his starting lineup and his rotations, then where does reigning all-defensive first-team Alex Caruso come into this picture for you? Well, I think he anchors the second unit. Okay. All right? Because I I think, optimally, the best lineup, just in my opinion, whether how he chooses it, what happens during training camp, we got five games, you know, I think you start Carter, Levine, DeRozan, P. Will, and Vooch. In my opinion, the first guy that comes out of the game is P. Will. Mm. Okay? And then you decide how you want to go with your lineup. Does that mean that Torrey Craig comes in or does Caruso come in? You know, it's, I think it's down to those two. Do you want to go small or do you want to still have some length? Right? And then that way, in my opinion, now as you slowly start you know, cycling those guys into the game so that you have that whole second unit in there. The one starter, I think, that's in that second unit is P. Will. And I think now you start to make P. Will the pivotal point of that offense in the second unit Mm -hmm. because he has to prove to us that he can consistently produce on the offensive end of the floor. Exactly. He has to. All right? If this team is going to make – and here's the interesting thing. When we say significant improvement, we're talking about going from 40 wins to probably 46. Is, right. In my opinion, 46 is the max. Yes. Unless they just find lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. All right? But just because I think the East is, is, is improved so much from top to bottom. I think the East from top to bottom might actually be better than the West. Oh, curse your tongue, sir. I'm saying from top to bottom. Oh, man. Top to bottom. I'm not saying – you know, the, the, the top teams in the West compared to the top teams in the East. Right. But I'm talking about top to bottom. Mm. Especially when you start thinking about the Bulls. Tell me, let's, like, real quick, who do you favor? Milwaukee or Chicago? Milwaukee. Bucks, Bucks, obviously. Philly or Chicago? Sixers. Even if Harden goes, probably still Philly. Boston or Chicago? Mm. Boston. Boston. Uh, Atlanta or Chicago? Yeah. Chicago. That was, that was Atlanta, close. but it's close. close. Miami Chicago. or Chicago? Miami. I don't want to answer that one. <laughs> but now we're already down the sixth. Right. And you got the Cavs. And you haven't and even the mentioned Knicks. the Knicks and the Cavs. What about Cleveland? Right. Cavs. In Chicago. Knicks in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Knicks. Okay. So you see them being back in that, I don't know, 8, 9, 10 range again? I probably, I, I would, if I was standing in Vegas right now mm. with, a, with a crisp hundred in my hand, I, mm-hmm. would, I would say play it. Oh. But I think that they, they can get to that sixth spot. Yeah. Because the qu- they squeaked into the six with 46 wins two years ago. But yeah. how, who do they, who do they right. jump? Who do they leapfrog? That's the question. Yeah. Okay. They were beating the, the bum teams. You know what I'm saying? They were destroying those Problem teams. Problem is, there aren't the any bum teams, teams, to your point. But that's exactly. the question. Who's the bum teams in the East? Exactly. Washington. Wizards. Washington. Washington. And I honestly don't think Charlotte. they're going to be as bad as everybody I think Charlotte's going to be better. better. They're going to be bad. (laughs) Charlotte's going to be better. They're getting Bridges back. They got P.J. Washington back. Mm -hmm. Well, you could say that they're one of the – let's just say lesser – They were playing team two years ago. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. but let's just say they're one of the lesser teams. Lesser teams for sure. But after that, I mean, you could say whether Orlando gets better or not. It's still a problem, yeah. That's the team that this team – this Bulls team has struggled – struggles against. And they have more room for, like, internal development than the Bulls do because they've got Mm -hmm. a bunch of young players who are all drafted really high. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is is that Orlando team, regardless of their record, fully believes 
They could have lost 10 in a row coming to Chicago. They fully believe that they're going to beat the Bulls that yep. night because of their history. That's how they play them. Yep. That's how they play them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely All right? true. So, listen, I, I keep thinking that the Bulls have promise. I, I really do. I mean, I love the additions. I fully believe that when you take the second unit as a whole, it could possibly be the best second unit in the league. See, when I say it, I'm crazy. But go ahead. Go ahead. Will. But I'm talking, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about one to five. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about four guys with a starter. No, no. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking saying. about five full bench guys. I got you. We on the same page. Those that don't agree, list a team that has a better second unit than – I'm just talking about on paper. We haven't played a game yet. Just right, it. yeah. But on paper, list a second unit. I'm with you, Will. Like, you ain't arguing for me. <laughs> like, we on the same page. Well, I'm I, waiting to see if Matt was going to say anything. I have to go through it and think, but you're right. I mean, they're the, – The Bulls' second unit? or yeah. yeah. I mean, depending on if it is, if it is in fact, people in that starting lineup. Then I mean, you're and, talking about Kobe Javon, Caruso, Kobe Torrey White, Craig. Kobe White, Alex Caruso, Torrey Craig. You could say Sonogo. Io and Drummond or – But I think Io, unfortunately, early on is going to be odd man out. Mm. Think so? But he will get a chance to play, sure, and he sure. will play well. They paid him more than they paid sure. uh, Javon Carter. Yeah. That's true. He'll get a chance. That's Caruso's not deal. playing all 82. Like, he'll, he'll get a chance to play. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing. Everybody's like, well, if Caruso could change how he plays, he can't. He is who he is. He has to play a certain way to be effective. Yes. yes. So that means he's not going to play all 82. Right. Period. Right. It's just, it is what it is. It's and what I, got him here. Yeah. I just don't think you can expect that from anyone. Like, back to what you were saying about the big three playing – however many games together, only missing 12 or 13 games. Like, I think at the end of the day, those guys need to be better. I think that's kind of what it comes down to. Well, what they did you say their plus shooting. minus was? For what? The big three? Uh, it was Slightly like negative. Point, it was plus z- point zero five or something. Like it was, it was, it, I think it was positive, but barely positive. Mm. And that's why, you know, again, we'll circle back to why Billy's so important mm-hmm. is he's got to convince these three to play a different way. Yeah. Mm. Is, is that why maybe, you know, so we're going to hear from a lot of people on Media Day uh, next Monday. We'll hear from Billy, we'll hear from AK, and we'll hear from a handful of the players. Who are you most uh, interested, curious, excited to hear from at the podium because they might tell us something new or interesting for a fan base that is maybe not all that excited about media day because we're going to be hearing a bunch of the same people talk to us about how this season's going to be magically different somehow. Uh, I want to hear from Arturis. I want to hear what his expectations are mm-hmm. as far as, you know, what he expects from this unit. And I want to hear why he thinks things will be different. And it's, it's we need uh, another word besides continuity. And then I want to hear, you know, from Billy about what he feels like he needs to do different. Mm. You know, I, I like Billy as a coach. I, I really do. I just, I think that now he needs to have his foot fully on the gas. Mm. And now, one thing, and I'm not necessarily saying this about Billy, but the one thing I learned when I was in the league, at the end of the day, the coach is responsible for his win-loss record. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, at what point do you start thinking, okay, I know this player needs this many touches and this player needs this and that player needs this and I got to massage this ego and I got to, you know, get out the kid gloves for this. But at some point, you got to think about, this, this is on me. You know, I, I'm the one ultimately is responsible for holding guys accountable and if guys don't want to play a certain way, you know, I've got to be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing I'm, I want to see is, you know, they, had, they brought in Pat Bev last year. Yeah. But unfortunately, Pat Bev was on his best behavior. He was. He was. Because I think he was just – he was doing what he thought was necessary to get another contract in Chicago. Yeah. Didn't work. I wanted to see the agitator – the asshole Pat Beverly. Yes, absolutely. He, you know, he was a showman, mm-hmm. but he wasn't what we needed him to be. Mm. Now, I know he was part of that 14 and 9, but I, we needed that guy that's, you know. You're, you're talking about things like holding his teammates accountable, 
yeah. like getting up in guys, that kind of thing. In Might be up. hard to do that role, play that role when you come in two thirds of the way through the season. No, I, I know, but that's his mo. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what we were hoping for. Mm-hmm. Worked on Zach. Definitely yeah. worked on him. But the question is now that he's not here, who's going to be the guy that does that? Right. And you can't ask a Kobe to do it. You can't ask Io to do it. It's not them. You know, it's not. Yeah, is Javon going to be that guy? We we, we don't know that. And you think that maybe Billy and his approach is a bit more on the good cop side of things as far as a coach playing that role for a team as opposed to one of the leading players in the locker room. Whereas, like, Tibbs has no problem being the hard ass on the team as the head coach. Are you saying that Billy, does, that's not his style? That's not his style. But the question is, okay, if that's not your style, then – you know, who's your player that's going to do it for you? Exactly. Yeah. Because exactly. that's the one thing. You know, that wasn't Pop's style, but he had Avery Johnson. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then once Avery left and they had a new guys, that's when Pop kind of ratcheted it up the, the uh, you know, the the – you know, what are the, the old man, the crotchety old man routine, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But he kind of knew what Avery's role was, mm-hmm. and Avery played it to a T. Yeah. But then when Avery was gone, you know, it really wasn't Tony Parker. It wasn't, you know, Tim Duncan. It wasn't Manu. You know, it was kind of – Pop kind of had to step up and do that. Yeah. And he, he didn't hesitate, and they kept winning championships. See, I'm, I'm glad you're saying this because this is stuff I've, I've been saying about this team. Like, when I talk about – getting betwixt the cheeks and somebody getting in their ass constantly. Like, I've always feel like that's kind of what's missing on this team. And it kind of leads me to this because I've, I've talked about this with Torrey Craig. Because Torrey Craig is, is, you know, a fiery guy. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. is kind of an agitator like that. And I want to know, is it something to a steel star- sharpening steel situation with him and Patrick Williams? Because for me, Patrick Williams needs that kind of stuff. Like somebody to be in him, you know, to challenge him constantly. And Torrey Craig is that kind of dog who will definitely be on you like that. Like, guys like you went up against Bill Cartwright, you know, in practice, you know. Is there something to that, you know, those that steel Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm not going to training camp, but, you know, Will is. Flex. Uh, Casey Johnson <laughs> is. Um, Joe's going. Mm-hmm. You know, all the beat guys Joe are can going. be the agitator. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's the agitator on the what beat. What are you doing, Kelly? So. Joe just says hello, and he's like, oh, screw you, <laughs> But, but that's is, something Joe says all the time is that we got a team full of choir boys. Yeah. And not yeah, enough dogs. Yeah. But the thing is, though, I think that that's where I'd be willing to wager that Billy's already had a conversation with, with Craig about this is what I need from you in training camp. We already know what you can do, but I need you to get under P. Will's skin. I need you to see if you can break him. Yeah. I need, we need reaction. Yes. Will he respond? And I think that that's – I want to see how lively training camp really is, not just between those two, but everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, because I fully believe that Billy's going to say the point guard position is wide open. So I want to hear about the matchups between Javon and Kobe and Io going at it in practice. Mm-hmm. You know, I Do just – you think from a player's perspective that these guys believe – what we are supposed to believe that AK is saying, which is that if they do X, Y, and Z things differently, that they can be better. Because I, the, when I watch them, I see a lot of isolation from Damar and Zach. I see Vooch struggling to get his touches. And it just doesn't strike me as a team that believes that if they play a certain style, that they can be better, that they can be more than the sum of their parts. How they play, their body language what you see leads you to believe that you know i'm and that's the thing it's it's not like okay i'm a player and i can see this you can't you don't understand i mean you you understand you brought it up you're talking about it this is why again we kind of reverts back to billy is is that if they're not doing it you know will he take them out of the game phil jackson wouldn't hesitate Mm. greg popovich wouldn't hesitate pat riley Pat Riley wouldn't hesitate. I feel like the one time Billy did that last year was the game that they ended up losing to the Magic. When Zach, Zach was like, was one, like for one for 13 or one for 14. And he pulled Zach, and then they lost. Yeah. 
Yeah, but and that's that okay. Just, you, I mean, you know, the interesting thing is Popovich used to say this all the time. You learn a lot more from a loss than you do from a bad win. Because hmm. there's a lot of bad wins out there. Because the problem with the, what, why it's labeled a bad win is because is you win and you're like, everything's cool. Oh, we got lucky. Mm-hmm. Something, you know, ball bounced a certain way, a bad call against your opponent, you know, and you, and you win. It's a, that's a bad win. There's a lot of good losses out there. Everybody's like, good loss. It's because of what you learn from that loss that can catapult you. But that's, that's the other thing, though. Will you bring it up? you got to put your feelings behind you, man. This isn't – it's not personal. Mm-hmm. You know, there, listen, listen we, can, we all – can pull out personal issues between coaches and players where both the player and the coach cross the line because it's just your human, human beings. Mm-hmm. But if Zach, who I think has a skill set to be a really good two-way player, but does Zach want to be known as an all-star – or does Zach want to be known as a superstar? Mm-hmm. And for him to get to superstar status, it's not by scoring more points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what does he want? And if that's – is he fine with just being a, you know, 15-time All-Star when he retires? Right. But yet overall has a losing record? And I think – like we've heard Zach Levine say that publicly – as far as what Bulls fans probably also want to hear is his answer is when, you know, when will Zach Levine earn more respect across the spectrum of people who follow and cover the NBA? Mm-hmm. He has said multiple times on the record, I know that so much of that is winning mm-hmm. and I haven't won that much. So hopefully his answer would be, I don't care about whether or not I make the all-star team. I just want our team winning games and going to playoffs and winning playoff games. That's the only right damn answer, yeah. isn't it? It's the only thing that elevates him. Yeah, you know, it's winning. But that's my point. That's why we really haven't brought this word up yet, but the biggest word that a player struggles with is sacrifice. Mm. Because that usually means that you're not necessarily sacrificing playing time, but you're sacrificing, you know, what most players feel like is the ultimate. I got to score points. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is what Vooch sacrificed. When he came here, yeah. took a lesser role. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, as we've discussed, Struggled a little bit, yeah. how, how did the Bulls improve this offense that's just stuck in the mud all the time? But maybe it involves not Vooch, but other members of that starting five sacrificing some touches here and there. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels to me that like the reason you'd be okay with sacrificing is if you see proof of concept that our team can play better offensively if I do sacrifice. Not just like, I'm going to sacrifice and see what happens. Yeah, but that's what, what sometimes players don't realize is, and they forget, is, is that every game is seen by every team, every scout, every evaluator, whatever you want to say, okay? So you're saying that by you, your eyesight, right, the eye test is you feel like that there was a lot of pushback to what the offense is, correct? Um, because you saw a lot of isolation. Pushback, but I, I just feel like there was a lack of... Lack of belief. Belief in it. Yeah. Okay. And I'll agree with you. But also now you have 29 other teams that are watching going, what's going on. 29 other teams that have relationships with assistant coaches, with head coaches. It's, it's, a, it's a network, right? So when other, when other coaches, scouts are at games and they come across a Bulls scout or another guy that's responsible for watching the Bulls all the time, hey, what do you see? What do you think about Zach Levine? What do you think about DeMar DeRozan? Do you think that guy would fit within our structure? Do you think, you know, it's not such a bad thing to get traded? I mean, that's... If your name's always in trades, that means you have value. Mm -hmm. All right? But at the same time, what I'm getting at is is that this is a team that won 40 games last year. Okay? It's very similar makeup, right? Very little change. I think last year's personnel to this year's personnel, this year's personnel as a whole is better. Definitely. 
But if we keep playing the same way, how much better are we going to be than 40 and 42? Mm. Not very. If the personnel doesn't <laughs> change, how you play has to change. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. exactly. And you mm. can't sit here and say, well, their defense has to get better. Their de- well, the defense I, was pretty darn good. <laughs> it was fifth rated in the league. What, <laughs> yeah. What's the weakness? The weakness was offense. Offense, yep. yeah, it's going. All right, was it, it, was in my, it, it was not enough threes per se, but I think that's kind of that's, – that's a misnomer. I think what it is is not necessarily so much, but respectfully, I disagree. They had the lowest three-point volume in the NBA for I get two that. running seasons. But you know how you also correct that? More possessions. Mm. Well, their uh, attempt rate, meaning their the volume of threes that they took per 100 possessions, was also towards the bottom. But I agree that like, it's not just like okay, Demar, no more mid-range shots. Like right. you only shoot threes now. Like I right. think that would ruin the offense. You you put the guys in the best position that they can to succeed, right? And so that means giving DeMar the ball where he needs it, but it also means giving Vooch the ball where he needs it. Mm-hmm. And spacing out the floor, using other shooters like Javon Carter and Torrey Craig to where maybe they get a kick out and shoot a three, but maybe now there's just more space in the paint where mm-hmm. DeMar can get all the way to the rim and get to the free throw line, and that's super efficient offense too. Seriously. Yeah, but, it, but when you let's talk about guys that you know are gonna play significant minutes, okay? Zach Levine and Patrick Williams, What? What is the, the strength of their game? Open court play. We need more from Patrick Williams, right? So how yes. do we get more from him? We're not going to hand him the ball and go, go to work in the half court. Right. You've got to run to get him the ball, to get him out on the floor. People are saying, well, now, wait a minute. You just said that, you know, you're going to make Patrick Williams the guy that takes the ball out of bounds. No, I'm, it's, it's all about matchup. Mm-hmm. If you feel Patrick Williams has a better matchup than Vooch does, Vooch takes the ball out of bounds. We changed up every game. It wasn't like 82 games, Horace Grant took the ball out, or I took the ball out. Or Bill. It changed every game. Mm-hmm. But you know that from the get-go. And that's where I think it makes P. Will more effective. It makes Zach more effective. All right? Where's Kobe best? Transition. Transition, yeah. Okay? Where do you think Torrey Craig's going to be best at? I'm running. <laughs> okay? Where do you think that Alex Caruso is going to – how is he going to get to the rim? So let's start going down the list Mm -hmm. of what makes this team – what's the easiest thing to make this team better without having to overhaul the offense? Play at a higher pace, push the basketball. Mm. Who does that hurt the most? DeMar. Right. But what happens in the fourth quarter? I don't care if it's the playoffs, it's the regular season. What Buckets. happens in the fourth quarter? Buckets. <laughs> the ball slows down. Mm-hmm. Not intentionally. Coaches are calling timeout. Coaches become more um, controlling as far as wanting to call all the plays. Mm-hmm. It just slows down. So, Jamar, you're going to get a lot of touches in that fourth quarter. Yes. All right? And you are a master at hitting difficult shots. Mm-hmm. You'll get to the free throw line. You'll get your touches. Yep. But if you only have six or eight at halftime, so what? Yeah. And if you're – what was the scoring average last year? DeMar, like 24, 24 and a half or something 24. like that. 24. So do you think if his scoring average goes from 24 to 18, yet they're winning more games and anybody will say anything? No. Negative? His, his agent might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a contract He's year. He's coming up on a contract. Okay, but. you're exactly right. But I can promise you that there's – Honestly, there might that be more teams it. out there seeing a that. veteran DeMar willing to take yes. on that kind of role. Just about to say Well, that. let's just say this. Contract. The teams that he wants to go to. Yeah. Right, right, right. Meaning – The Clippers or the Lakers. Clippers or the <laughs> Lakers. See, I'm glad you – this is exactly the style I've Boston, been, I've, I've been Philly, saying, Will. Like, Milwaukee. that's why I'm glad you're saying all this. Like, we, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, too. Just um, about you don't have to put DeMar on a bench, you know, for no. the Bulls to just run. Like, you need, you're going to need that kind of guy so on your team. What, what goes into running more? Is it just like, uh, like hitting a switch in terms of how players decide they want to play? Or is there something you can do to like generate? Well, that's why I think or? it's, I think, A, it's getting the ball out quick. Yep. Okay, even on misses. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew, like, when I got a rebound, if I got a, a rebound on a certain half of the field, on the court, I knew exactly where my outlet pass was. I knew that with my eyes closed. Continuity. Okay. And if I couldn't do that, there was a guy on the other side. Free throw line extended. 
all right? And then everybody else is busting it. And then all of a sudden, if they see they can't get it, but you can't run with your head turned. You got to run, you know, you got to see the ball while you're running. But then that, there's that first pass. And what made, I, I don't like to talk about this to bring his name up, but I have to talk about this. What makes Lonzo Ball so effective? His willingness to give up the basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I know that people think that Tex Winter was a madman, but we used to run a break where we weren't allowed to put, the ball wasn't allowed to hit the floor. Hmm. On a make. You know what that meant? <laughs> when we were running practice, that meant the guy that was taking the ball out of bounds right. had to sprint his ass down so that when the ball went through the net, it didn't hit the floor. Because hmm. it, was, it was a conditioning drill, but it was also a drill that, that we were working on. This is how we want to run. Boom, ball comes out, throw it. No, this is a no defense drill too. You hit that guy, free throw line extended. The other guy cuts across the middle. Boom, you throw it to that guy. Now your other two guys are already on the wing. The big has already buried his man down underneath. And now the guy that's taking it out is hauling ass down because if the ball can't come, then the guy that takes the ball out of bounds sets a screen roll. Mm-hmm. But you can't do this in the drill. But the thought is, is that when you come down, if the defense is back, then the guy that takes it out just veers off and sets a screen on the ball. You get a little DHO action with Demar and Vooch, like that's immediately. You like if you can get into that after you've already looked out on the wings or for cutters or for corner threes, you're getting the same look probably at the same point in the shot clock, right? Because they yes. get straight into those dribble handoffs with Demar and Vooch. But now you've already looked for something else easy. But maybe it's, it's also, there, maybe it's not. But you, but it's also the ability to have the discipline to continue to trust your teammates. To if we run through the different options. We're going to get a good shot. Right. Yeah. Um, I hate to cut this conversation off, gentlemen, because we could obviously talk Bulls and NBA hoops with our friend Will Purdue all day. But we've got Honestly. CHO Cubs pregame on deck. So we got to go so we can get a switch over here. Oh a um, <laughs> couple last quick <laughs> shout outs to our sponsors, including Circle K. Join the new free Circle K Inner Circle free. Rewards Program by downloading the free Circle K app. You can save 25 cents per gallon on your next five fill-ups after downloading that Circle K app. Also, on top of those benefits, every sixth item you purchase, including things like their hot and ready slices of pizza at the Mm. Circle K inside, their coffee, their ice-cold delicious fountain drinks, every sixth one you purchase is actually going to be free if you use that Circle K app plus those 25 cents a gallon off your first five fill-ups. Join the Inner Circle today by downloading the free Circle K app. And also, shout out to the Goose Island Beer Company. Mm. You already know that amazing roster they have. The Beer Hug family, the 312 Wheat L, the Matt and Big Day favorite full pocket pills. And of course, since it's fall weather outside, Oktoberfest beer is on the way. So you can head right on down, grab an ultra fresh exclusive beer from the Goose Island Original Brew House on Clive Warren Avenue in Lincoln Park or from the tap room on Fulton Street in West Town because it's the Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's how come you guys beer. Aren't having, how come you guys don't have a few of those sitting right here right now? We, we, we got them everywhere. They're in the we fridge. Point them out. We no, got I'm you. talking about in a frosty mug what, during the show. Oh, we oh, didn't well, have you know. We like the red cups, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if I had a beer on set and then we went and had dinner and then had some drinks at dinner, you'd you know be like, oh, heck, and drinking at work and after work? He's going to say, some anyway. Flex. <laughs> that was a flex, Joey. <laughs> You're right, Joe. He was definitely flexing. Uh, shout out to Trey in the comments. Appreciate the super chat. Welcome back. One of those Bulls fans who took some time off for their mental health. Good Welcome for you. back. Shout Welcome. out. Trey Welcome to camp next week. ATL. Um, always our love and appreciation to Will Purdue for stopping by the studio. The best. Will Man. underscore Purdue 32 yes. on Twitter. And you know where to find him. He's a part of our old coverage team, NBC Sports Chicago, yep. pre and post game. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up for Will <laughs> Purdue. Yeah, for Will. Shout out and thanks to our pal and producer, Joey Spathis, a.k.a. Joey 1K, Joey Bordeaux. Joey. Will the Go Godly, Will underscore Godly, Big Dave is at Bow, BWL Sports, on Bulls underscore Peck. We are CSU underscore Bulls. We are back in studio tomorrow, same time, same place. Hey, can I say something before we Four go o'clock. Off here? Yeah, Please go do. I, I appreciate you guys. I'm glad we were able to get this done. I have one question, though. Big Dave, is your name on the bottom of that cup? What cup is this? That red cup? Is my name on the bottom? <laughs> it is not. You know, like back in the day when you used to go to the keg parties and they're like, hey, one cup per person, put your name on the bottom. I got to talk to you about <laughs> your, keg, your keg parties, Will. <laughs> you got to put your name on it. Will's getting it in, man. Shout out. Will Purdue Vanderbilt representing. I think everything here is Big Dave's cup. <laughs> It's all love for everybody, man. I mean, it's kind of like Vegas, right? Nobody's listening.
<laughs> it stays on the CHGO podcast. Keep it live right here on the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Cubs pregame on deck. Big series against the Braves starts tonight Huge. as the Cubs try to lock up that wild card spot. Cody is depressed. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, Bulls Nation. We love you. See Red be good. Peace. Will Purdue. Peace. Will Purdue, y'all. Will Purdue.